Hexadecimal numbers are things that you might run into once in a while when programming. They're used for things like representing color codes often to represent colors in games and in web design and just in computers in general. They might also be used uh, to represent a mask, uh, which is just a bit field which you can combine with other bit fields and check against other bit fields to see if they include each other. Unfortunately, if you're using GameMaker, there isn't really a nice way to represent a number as hexadecimal on the screen. Uh, you can't convert it to a string very easily. If I were to create a variable and assign a hex value with um, using 0x to denote a number as a hexadecimal value, 0xff is, um, as you probably know, it's 255. Uh, if I were to show message that number, uh, we would, of course, just see the value 255 instead of the, uh, the hexadecimal literal uh, 0xff. If you are used to the older uh, game maker style of representing hex numbers, by the way, you can also still use the dollar sign. And this will also uh, do the same thing. It will turn a FF into a hexadecimal number. That's usually okay. Usually when you show a number to the user or at least print it out in the console, you want it in decimal because that's what we humans are used to counting as. I am personally a bit of a proponent of adopting base 12 as our standard counting base, but that's probably never going to happen ever. Anyway, base 16 is what we're concerned with right now, and unfortunately, as I've said, there isn't really a nice, neat, built-in way to convert a, uh, a number value into hexadecimal. In theory, this should just be as easy as representing a number inside the computer as a decimal value, since inside the computer it's just all base 2 anyway, and you have to do some conversion to show it in base 10. But GameMaker doesn't have a built-in way to do that. If you want to, you could write your own script that would turn a number into a hexadecimal value, and it would look something like this. If you want that code, I will have a link to it in the video description. Except there kind of is! And I found this by accident while I was messing around with something else. Uh, GameMaker has a function called pointer. I'll just uh, type it here, I'll just start typing. GameMaker has a function called pointer, and this will convert any, any given value into a pointer. GameMaker doesn't really make use of pointers, it makes use of them in, mostly when dealing with, uh, with extensions when you want to pass, like, a reference to a buffer to a DLL or something, you might get a pointer to it. But it does have a, fo a function that allows you to convert any old value into a pointer. This function's kind of useless. Uh, if you're dealing with really low-level languages like C or whatever, and you want to do pointer magic, uh, the compiler will let you, if you know what you're doing. But when you're using a, an extremely high-level system like GameMaker, it's not something you really want to do very often. But nevertheless, uh, the pointer function exists. The pointer function will turn a value that you give it into a pointer. And if you were to then either draw this message on the screen or show it in a dialog box or print it out in the console, lo and behold, you have six zeros and FF. This is wonderful. So this will let you turn any given value into a pointer, and that pointer will be represented in hexadecimal. Under the hood, internally inside GameMaker, nothing special is really happening here. If you've ever poked around inside the YoYo compiler header, you probably know what R values are. If you don't know what R values are, you probably don't want to hear me talking about R values. But at the end of the day, when GameMaker tries to represent a pointer as a string, when you draw it on the screen or whatever, or if you were to explicitly cast it to a string using the string function, this is going to do the same thing. As you will see, uh, the pointer will be represented in hex. This is most likely because when you're when you're looking at pointers, it makes some degree of sense to represent memory addresses as hexadecimal numbers. Uh, we are not doing any of that. We are not actually doing anything with the pointer. We are just using this function to turn a number into a hexadecimal. So this has its limitations. GameMaker, as you're probably aware, will build a 32-bit executable by default. Recently in GameMaker Studio 2.3.1, which came out of beta approximately this morning and hit the stable release branch. We now have the ability to build 64-bit executables, but that is not the default. Uh, the significance of FFFFFFFF, uh, as you may have guessed, is that it is the largest value that you can store inside a 32-bit integer. That 32 bits will be the size of the pointer in GameMaker in a 32-bit program. Uh, if I were to try to deal with a number that is larger than that, let's say 5 billion, 5,000 million, billion, I think that's the right number of zeros. If I were to try to uh, show a number larger than that, show message itself will work just fine because integers inside GameMaker know how to deal with that. But when I try to convert it to a pointer, we are not going to get the right answer. 5 billion in hexadecimal is this, what, whatever you're seeing on the screen right now. 
and uh, the pointer function turned it into this. There is a little bit of overflow going on, and we uh, we do not have uh, the correct value, so this will stop working. What you can do, though, is uh, if you do not mind dealing with a 64-bit executable with all the caveats of that that I discussed in a video that I made recently on 64-bit executables, uh, you can go into Windows Options, Game Options, and check the Use x64 Windows Runtime little box down there, and then you can run the game. And now this is going to work because the pointer is now 64 bits wide. That is 5 billion, and this is the correct representation of that 5 billion number in hexadecimal. Is this something you should even think about doing in your game? I will let you be the judge of that. So, this also works in reverse. If you, for whatever reason, I'm going to change this back to a 32-bit uh, runtime for now. If, for whatever reason, you uh, have a hexadecimal number as a string, and you want to convert it to an actual number, this could be useful if you're reading values from a file and you're trying to uh, convert a value from a file that is in hexadecimal notation into an actual number, or if you want to collect input from the user, if you want to um, like ask the user for a hexadecimal color code and turn that into a number. Uh, likewise, there is not a built-in way to do that, kind of. Uh, if you have a string that is in the form of 0x, uh, let's say ff, and you try to, um, if you try to convert it to a number using the real function, uh, this will work. I'm going to comment out that second line now. Uh, this will work. It'll turn it into 255 if the real function sees a 0x in front of that number. This will not, if I recall correctly, work for the dollar sign, which is the older notation. This will cause an error. Uh, yeah, this is going to cause an error, unable to convert that string to a number. As a bit of a fun fact, this also won't work if you uh, if you put the literal string into the um, into the real function. The compiler will reject it, even though it actually is completely fine turning that into a real number, uh, unable to convert 0xff to real. That's a shame. This will work. Uh, you can, as you probably guessed, if you are wondering where I'm going with this, use the pointer function to turn this into a uh, into a number. So if you were to use the pointer function on this, uh, first let's say, um, let's make a local variable called converted number, and that can be um, pointer function taking number as a parameter. And then after that, let's show Yes, I know there's an X in there, and there should not be. The X and the D keys are kind of close together on the keyboard. I'm sure you can see how that uh, how that error happened. Let's run this code. Let's uh, let's pass the string containing the letters FF into the pointer function and see what the result of that is. So this does indeed create a pointer, as we can see, and its value is uh, hexadecimal FF, uh, or 255. Uh, you can also, of course, turn this into a real number going the other way of the operation that we did at the beginning of this video, uh, using the real function, and this will turn a pointer back into a number. And if we run this code, we will be able to see that this does indeed convert the FF into a, the numerical value of 255, which is, of course, what we want. If you had a more complicated number, uh, FF00, I don't know, 33, that's a color. That's a color of some sort. It'll turn this into a number. And this is a 16,711,731, whatever color that corresponds to. I know it'll be blue-ish. I just don't know the exact shade. I'll, I'll throw a rectangle on the screen of that particular color. So this goes both ways. Uh, I don't think this will work if you uh, prepend it with the, the uh, hexadecimal dollar sign or the 0x. Uh, that did not work, 0x. I don't believe these worked when I was testing it earlier. Oh, okay, the 0x works. It will accept a number that is um, a hexadecimal number that is uh, preceded by 0x the same way that the real function will. Just like when you're turning a regular number into a, uh, into a hexadecimal number, uh, this will run into a limit at 32 bits. If I were to try and convert a number that is bigger than uh, 32 bits into a, a pointer in the string, in, in the form of a string, that's a... Uh, uh, four, six, eight, nine. This is nine hexadecimal digits long. That will not fit into a 32-bit integer. Uh, this will not work. We are not going to get back the value that um, that we put in. Uh, instead, we have negative 16,777,216. Uh, that is obviously not the correct number. You can see that this ran into the same problem that we had before, being that this uh, will not fit into a 32-bit integer. Uh, the pointer in GameMaker is a 32-bit integer, and its value underflowed, overflowed 
underflowed is when it goes negative and becomes very large again. Uh, the value overflowed and spat out the wrong answer. Once again, you can fix this by checking the use the 64-bit Windows runtime box and you will suddenly have the correct result. That was not the correct result. Is that just, is there just something wrong with that particular value? Ha, I didn't actually click the okay box. So this was still trying to run this game as a 32-bit program. Uh, the pointer size was consequently still 32 bits long and, uh, and it just wasn't working because it didn't actually do anything. Now let me run this. And this should indeed spit out the correct answer. Uh, this is the value in decimal, whatever that is. It looks like, uh, if I can count the numbers, that looks like 8 billion or so. Sounds about right. Sure, why not? So this has been Stupid GML Hacks with Michael. Is this something that is the intended function of the pointer function? Absolutely not. Is it something that will work in your game if it meets the requirements and you don't really need to do anything with uh, long 64-bit integers? Probably. Is this something that is going to change as, as GameMaker receives updates? Is this a bug that's going to be fixed? I doubt it. This isn't really a bug. As I said, it's helpful when you represent memory addresses to do so in hexadecimal notation rather than decimal. I don't foresee this behavior being changed any day soon. You could make the argument that it's messy code and that it's stupid and that it's using things for purposes other than what they're intended and that it'll make your code hard to read. And you wouldn't be wrong. But again, whether or not you think that's something that is a good enough reason to not ever do this is, uh, is very much up to you. Um, obviously, this if you, put, if you try to input a string that does not contain a valid hexadecimal number, uh, this will not work if I try to put some letters that are like G, H, I, J, K, whatever. And if I try to convert this to a pointer, uh, this is obviously not going to work. It did its best. I give it that much. But to be fair, if you were to do the same thing to a regular uh, string that you tried to convert to a number in base 10 using this, uh, the normal real function, it would also just not work. It would uh, probably crash with an error. Garbage in, garbage out, as the father of computer science once told somebody in the middle of the 19th century. So I'm going to stop. Uh, I will not be posting the code for this in the video description because this is just a couple lines of demonstration. You can use this, you cannot use this. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, they're usually a little bit more serious than this, I promise. Uh, there are links to that in all the usual places as well. Otherwise, I try to post a couple game dev videos a week. I hope you found that useful or at the very least interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Indie Punch, Jason, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.